Good day, everyone. Thank you for joining us for this overview of the Folio Wiki in JIRA. My name is Paul Muller, and I am the lead of the digitization, description, and discovery team at the University of Colorado Boulder and the host for today's event. This session is part of a series of onboarding videos for community members. You'll find links to the other videos in this series in the description of this video on YouTube or see the member onboarding button on the Folio project homepage at www.folio.org. Amory Bro is Vice President Workflow Services Product Management at EBSCO Information Services and the Folio product owner for data import and tags. She will be conducting this overview. Over to you, Anne-Marie. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, I am really excited to talk about this Folio Wiki and the JIRA spaces. I use them pretty much all day, every day. So as Paul said, my job with Folio is a product owner and product owners are kind of the, the liaison, the bridge between the users, which we sometimes call subject matter experts or SMEs, and the developers who are gonna actually be producing the code that drives Folio. So we gather requirements for what the users of a particular area are going to need. We try to get those organized. We work with designers to come up with mock-ups for what those um, screens should look like. And we're also working with architects behind the scenes to figure out what kind of infrastructure will be needed to make that UI work. We put it all together. The developers and architects are also assessing the complexity and the size of the work. And so sometimes we'll have some negotiation on what should we do in a first pass? What should we do in a, in a refinement pass? Um, but our main job is keeping all of that organized for a particular area of folio and then helping the developers um, organize and manage and prioritize the work that they're going to need to do. Most of us work with developers on a particular development team and we are trying very hard to make sure that everybody stays on track, both in terms of the work that is to be done and the size and scope of the work to be done and the user expectations. So I have a bunch of links in a Word document here that I'm gonna to use to kind of drive things for myself. And I'm gonna start with the Folio Wiki. And I'm actually gonna put myself down here in the corner. The Folio Wiki, uh, the URLs right here, is basically the entryway to all of the information about Folio. You do not need to have a logon for this. You can come see any of this information. Um, there's a link from the OLF homepage to get here. But if you want to edit information or if you want to watch uh, certain pages, um, to have in, uh, notifications when pages are updated, you need to have a logon. And so the first link you see here is to let you get, it's actually a logon for JIRA as well, which is the second tool that we're gonna be looking at. And I did that in a, um, in a uh, incognito window because it kept taking me to my last JIRA page that I had been on. So if you click that link and you don't have a logon, you'll get to this page where you'll be able to go ahead and set up a logon, sign up for a new account. And then that will let you have a logon for the wiki and for JIRA. Um, with the, with the uh, logon, you can edit uh, pages in the wiki best to not start editing unless you uh, kind of know what you're doing. Um, it's really good idea to take a look at who last edited a page or who created that page and um, kind of follow their lead. So I'm gonna go back to the wiki and this homepage really has many, many links for different places that you may want to go on uh, in all of this information for Folio. Um, we're always looking for more developers and now also more product owners. 
Um, so we have our little mandatory advertising up top there. There are several communication spaces because there are people in the community from pretty much every time zone in the world. Um, many of our communication spaces are asynchronous. So we have uh, Slack, um, which is a, a tool that we use for um, kind of messaging and, and quick communications. Uh, we have the discussion area. Um, we have uh, email lists for the various SIGs and there's links to the on the communication space for all of those. The next section on the homepage has to do with of the governance and administration of folio and the governance model changed a few months ago so the community council and the product council are basically what they sound like um, they are uh, governing bodies to help to um, keep the overall folio project and community running smoothly um, their meetings are open to everyone and uh, and you can see spaces for those uh, groups here. There's also a vision document, and here's more about the background of the governance model. In the important link section, here's that one that Paul was talking about, welcome new community members, start here. And so I'm gonna click on that one for just a minute because one of the things I noticed here was the different kinds of community members. And it's very easy to get mm, kind of blinders on as to what section you're, you're in as far as the different kinds of community members. Um, so it's interesting to see all the different kinds here. Subject matter experts tend to be the librarians who are catalogers or circulation staff or electronic resources, um, acquisitions. Um, subject matter experts are the people that are going to be interacting with Folio. And keep in mind, Folio is a back office system. This is not a system that your, your library users are going to be interacting with. It's your library staff who will be interacting with it. We have all kinds of testers involved. Um, most of the subject matter experts will help during Bugfest. Um, to test new functionality and to make sure that we haven't regressed existing functionality. We have many developers in many time zones and they tend to work in teams on particular portions of Folio. We have uh, 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 about 15 product owners who each are responsible for different portions of Folio. And we have some designers who help us with the mockups that we need. And very important, we don't see them very often, but the translators are a huge uh, important part of Folio because Folio was designed from the outset to be international and not English specific. Although you'll see that most of the wiki here is in English. So any of the screen labels that you see in Folio can be translated to whatever language you need if it's a language that um, goes right to left instead of left to right, we can also flip the formatting of the screens. And the translator volunteers from all these different countries have been incredibly helpful in building out the translations for different languages. That said, we're always looking for more. Um, in the middle here are basically the various kinds of tools that might be of interest to you. There is a code of conduct that I would just point out to you. And now I'm gonna go back to the main wiki page. And I'm actually gonna look at my Word doc for just a second here. All right, getting a log on, administration, new community members. All right, implementers. So if you decide to implement Folio, you are not alone. Um, we have a number of libraries that have implemented so far, and you'll see a list here on the kind of homepage of the implementation section. Um, some are implementing uh, more of Folio than others. Some are starting with maybe the ERM functionality. Um, others are starting with circulation perhaps before other things. And so you'll see a list of the implemented libraries and each of these is a hot link to more details about that particular library. 
So you can see we, we have a, a growing group of libraries and uh, I think pretty nice representation from other parts of the uh, various parts of the world. We just got our first library in Chile, um, Universidad de Concepcion. We also, on the homepage, have a link to the various folio environments. And these demo sites are places where you can see the most recent work that's being done on folio and kind of the most stable information, uh, the most stable version. Right now, we're just in the process of releasing Juniper. So this link is not quite working yet. Our most recent release before that was Iris. And so if I click on that, I can go to the Iris version of Folio. This is a kind of sandbox version. So this is not any particular libraries. There's not a whole lot of data in here, but it's a place where you can play with it and test it out and see what you think. We also have these areas, Folio Snapshot and Folio Snapshot Stable. Folio Snapshot can be a really handy uh, area if you wanna see the most recent development work. So development work that's happened after Iris and after Juniper. We're now in the process of doing the Kiwi work. And for, uh, for Folio Snapshot, you can see the work that was done yesterday and was merged into the main code base for Folio. So currently we're working on Kiwi and we are expecting that it will come out in November. I also wanted to quickly mention, which one's next? I wanna say a little bit more about the release spaces. We're, we're gonna be talking about these um, more in the JIRA section, but we have a section here for releases and you'll see that the names of the releases are flower-based. So we just are finishing Juniper and we're starting Kiwi. And here's our list of flowers. Um, Next comes Lotus, then Morning Glory, and then Nolana, which I don't even know what it is. But that's our way to help keep our releases organized and uh, marching forward. In the Juniper release, which has just been completed, you'll see things like the uh, milestones that we were trying to meet. So let me go back up to the top of here. The developers work in two week sprints and they, you'll see the sprint numbers um, over on the left-hand side. And then what are the main things that we are trying to accomplish during that sprint? As we get closer and closer to the release, you'll start to see um, testing, uh, merging, code up into uh, master, releasing the code, schema upgrade tests, and then manual testing. Usually there's some bug fixes as well. And then finally the release becomes public. With the release, there is always a set of release notes that describes uh, what has been done for each of the various apps. And, and also if, there are things that you should be aware of when it comes to um, migrating from the previous version up to Juniper, um, particularly if there's things related to permissions or uh, things that have changed from the previous version. So all of those details are here in the release notes. We also have a lot of tracking of bug fest and the bug fixing that we're trying to do during uh, the, the last portion of the development cycle. Um, so you'll see instructions for the manual testers and then tracking for the various um, bugs that have been identified. We also, as of Juniper, have started putting links to the sprint demos that happen. Um, we've made a page for each of the releases. So during the Juniper development, we had three sprint demos Typically those ha happen once every two sprints. So approximately every four weeks. Um, as it happened, we had uh, an eight week version here, four sprints were covered. All of these recordings are available on the Folio YouTube channel. 
and sorry, the OLF YouTube channel. And these will show you the most recent work that's been done by the various developers in the various apps. So the stuff that they show you during these sprint demos is not something that you can go out and implement tomorrow. Um, it's the stuff that will be coming in the next release. So we have finished all of the Juniper sprint demos. We're having our first Kiwi sprint demo next week. And typically these recordings will show up a day or two after the sprint demo. So currently we're in Kiwi. And when you look at the time frame for Kiwi, we are finishing today um, sprint 120 or 121. Um, we're starting sprint 122 on Monday. And we have some deadlines coming up. We have an API freeze that's coming. And then soon we'll be starting to work on the schema upgrade testing. All right, that's release spaces. Next thing I want to mention is the SIGs. So I'm going to go back to the home page. And in the middle of the home page, there's a section about the special interest groups. We have special interest groups that are, some of them are larger and more active than others. Um, and they either are, are formed around particular functionality or around particular types of, of users. The largest and most active ones are metadata management, which is the catalogers and the um, folks that deal with inventory, uh, instances, holdings, and items, records, all that kind of stuff. Resource management has recently split into two groups, the acquisition SIG, which deals with ordering, receiving, invoicing, vendors, finances, and then the e-resource management SIG, which deals with, as it sa says, e-resource management um, and all of the work as far as uh, terms and contracts and license agreements and all that kind of stuff. User management is exactly what it is. And keep in mind that there's two kinds of users in Folio. The behind the scenes users who will be uh, the ones that are most interacting with Folio need things like various kinds of permissions. And so permissions is part of the user management and the users app. And then also the patrons, the users of the library. So user management deals with um, the users app and all of the information that needs to pass back and forth as far as um, uh, creating new users, keeping that synchronized with external systems that track users. The resource access SIG is all things circulation, requests, um, so all of that public, face, public facing stuff that I tend to not be so involved with. And then we have some more specialized SIGs, you'll see them here. Um, and then last, we have a few that are um, language oriented and region oriented. So the Australian, New Zealand, um, we have a, a very active German group with us. Uh, we have an active Chinese group with us. And so you'll see the various SIGs here. And I wanna just take us over into the acquisition SIG for a minute. The acquisition SIG um, is basically all the people that are acquisitions staff of some kind who want to help out with defining and understanding the requirements for orders, invoices, um, vendors and organizations, uh, finance and receiving. And so you'll see a list of the most, uh, most active people. Every SIG and every subgroup tends to have a meeting schedule and so uh, the acquisitions group meets every Tuesday and every other Friday. And there's always links to the details for the Zoom. Anybody is welcome to join them. My coworker, Dennis Bridges, is the product owner for acquisitions. And one of the things he does here that I think is really awesome is this requirements analysis section. Um, so one of the things we've been working on recently trying to get ready is being able to create orders in Edifact format, and then export those. And what he's done here is take a lot of the information from JIRA, which is the development system we'll look at, and 
organize it in a way that's more accessible for all of the users and it gathers up all of the details in one place instead of having them broken out across a lot of different um, issues and stories in JIRA. So what is the problem we're trying to solve? We need to get orders out to vendors. How are we gonna do that when it comes to Edifact? And so these are the requirements that he has worked out with various uh, librarians and users of acquisitions. And he has little tags that he uses to keep track of, has he confirmed this? Um, are we still discussing this? Is there an outstanding question of some kind? So for example, we haven't talked about some kind of an export summary yet, so that one's still pending. If there are UI mockups, we'll attach them here. And then down at the bottom, he will have sections for questions and make sure that, that we get any important questions sorted out and organized before we start development work. So questions from the users about will it do what we need it to do in various ways. Questions from the vendors, because uh, the vendors have to be able to accept this output from Gobi, or sorry, from Folio. And questions from the developers. He has just started going over these requirements with the developers. And in the first um, discussion with the developers, these were some questions that came up from then that we need to finalize before we consider this feature ready for the developers. He also shows the feature, and we're going to be looking at features in JIRA in just a couple minutes. And then he shows various stories that are involved in making that feature come to life on Folio. So in the SIG areas, um, I, again, I would say Acquisitions has really organized a lot of this work. You'll always find links to the meetings. Typically, you're going to find meeting notes and um, agendas ahead of time. Oops, and I lost my meeting notes. Here they are. And typically, you're going to find links to the recordings. And so you can see the topics that have been talked about most recently. One other space that I just want to point out is the product owner space. Come on. And so the product owners, like me, are involved in getting those requirements ready for the developers. And if you ever have questions about which product owner is involved with which, which portion of Folio, there's a directory here of all of the product owners. We have it broken down by kind of broad subject areas. We also have an area that is currently um, kind of getting worked on and changed, let me just see if I can get back to it quickly, called Tips and Tricks, where we have some kind of informal documentation of Folio. There is some more formal documentation that's being worked on, and some of the areas have, have uh, switched over to that more formal documentation. For example, here in the checkout area, you can see that this portion of the wiki, this page is no longer being maintained, and you can go to the more formal documentation that's being maintained. Um, I think there's probably a place for both in Folio. In data import, which is my area, we don't have the formal documentation yet, but we have a lot of informal documentation to help you with understanding the syntax that you're using for various import um, profiles um, for, uh, uh, for matches, how to set up data import locally, all of those kinds of things. And then the last space that I wanna go to is the developer space. So Folio tends to have uh, most of the developers working in various teams. Some of the teams are more centrally organized and some of them are um, more self-governing. Each of the teams does the work the way that they feel like is gonna be best for them. And some of those teams have scrum masters who help to keep the work organized and have several developers. Some teams are very small. The teams area though, shows you the various teams that are involved. 
Um, we have many teams in Eastern Europe. Um, we have a team at Leipzig. We have um, a team, several teams in the US. Um, we have a team in uh, Latin America. So we have uh, teams all over the place. And if you pick one of the teams, you'll see some details about the people who are on the team. So Folajet is my development team, um, what kind of work they do, and then a calendar that shows the sprints. And um, we always have vacations in August. So we have various people that have been on vacation. So this is kind of the organizing space for the teams as far as um, their best practices, their definition of done. Um, in our case, we also have labels that we use to identify different kinds of um, uh, JIRA issues that we want to be able to track in various ways. So these are organizational spaces for the individual teams. And that's pretty much it on the wiki that I wanted to show you. Does that sound okay, Paul? Should we switch over to JIRA? Yes, we're doing good. Uh, please switch over. Okay, so I am gonna close out a few of these just so I don't get myself confused. And I wanna start with JIRA with a couple of slides. JIRA is the workspace that the developers and the product owners use. When you are new to Folio, there is absolutely no need, I repeat, no need for you to get deeply involved in JIRA. Um, you mostly don't even have to know that it exists. It's our shared workspace that we use for the development teams, but this is where the work is broken down into a lot of detail. Not all the development work is tracked there and especially not in as much detail. Some of the teams work with other um, tracking systems in their own uh, organization that they belong to. But for several of the teams, JIRA is the main organizing space for the work. So with JIRA, there are a number of issue types. An issue is basically a thing in JIRA. And we track all of the work in JIRA by issue type. Epics and features are the descriptions of the work that needs to happen. Stories, bugs, tasks, and technical debt are those features broken up into pieces that are actionable, so that can be done by the developers. The product owners and the users tend to focus on the epics and features. Uh, what is the piece of folio that I am interested in and what do I need it to be able to do? So we spend a lot of our time in this section of JIRA. The product owners are responsible, each of us are responsible for certain epics and the features that belong to those epics. The product owners then work with the architects and the designers and the developers to break that work down into various kinds of issues that the developers will work on. So stories, here's some more, something new that needs to be done. Bugs, something that didn't work as expected. Tasks, maybe it's um, getting an environment ready for testing, um, but it's not really writing a bunch of new code. And technical debt, something that we need to go back and take a look at and, and not really a bug, but something that needs to be cleaned up. Just to give you an example of some of those, um, we're gonna take a look at uh, data import in a little while. And the epic for data import was originally named batch loader. And we've just kept that name over the last couple of years, but we refer to it and the app is actually named data import. The features, there are uh, a couple hundred features. We'll take a look at those in just a minute. One of those features is importing Edifact invoices. So much of the first work in data import was related to importing MARC records to create instances, holdings, and items, and inventory, and to update those. Most recently, we've been working on also importing Edifact invoices to automatically create the invoices in the acquisitions area. When we start to break that down, we'll have different kinds of stories. So one of those stories is 
if I'm going to import an invoice, I need to have a way to say, take the data from this section of the incoming invoice and put it in this area of the folio invoice. That's the field mapping profile. So that's one of our stories. We needed to create a way for users to be able to do that. We have bugs that show up. We, for some reason, we were not saving this little exchange rate checkbox that we needed to. We have tasks and you'll sometimes see them called spikes where we need to research something because we, we either need more information or we need to sit down and figure out how we're going to do that work. And so we needed a way to break open Edifact files into their pieces. And it's important for us that it's an open source parser. So somebody needed to take that on. And then a lot of the technical debt has to do with testing or has to do with upgrading to newer versions of some of the internal software that Folio uses. We have many tests that we're working on automating and a lot of that is what you will see as technical debt. All right, that's it for the slides. I am going to put us into JIRA now. So this is my world I live in pretty much every day nonstop. UX Prod 47 is my epic for the batch importer, also known as data import. And what you'll see is uh, an overall kind of description of what we expect for data import to do. And then you'll see a list of features, these little orange guys. The ones that are crossed off are finished and they are marked as closed. And then there are ones that are not crossed off that are either open, um, you'll see some that are in progress if we go further down the list, and you'll see some that are draft that we haven't even finished outlining the requirements for. So as part of batch uh, loading data import, you'll see there are many, many, many features involved. I'm going to pick that one feature that I wanted us to look at, which is importing artifact invoices. I hope I'm going to pick it. And we actually did this as two different features in Folio. We did it as a back end feature and as a front end feature. Um, most of the time, we would normally do this as one feature put together, but it's just the way that it happened in this case. And again, every product owner and every development team organizes their work in slightly different ways. So the import invoices and Edifact import, this was the backend feature that shows the various pieces that we needed to do. And here's where you'll see some of those spikes where we needed to do some investigation before we started the work. Um, you'll see uh, stories where we, we were creating profiles, and you'll see one bug here. And a lot of times bugs will show up after the main feature has been closed. You'll also see these little guys over here on the right, and these are priority levels. So this one down here, this is a P1, the, the highest priority. And when we're looking at organizing the work for the development teams, it's important to us to make sure that the highest priority work is getting handled first. Uh, this guy is the second level priority. This one is third level priority. And this one is unassigned. Um, so we, we did it, but we never assigned a priority to it. We also have the um, separate one. Let me just look up the number real quick for the UI side of things, which was which I'm not going to worry about right now. But there, there was a separate feature that had the um, screenshot or the uh, mockups of what we wanted the um, screen to look like when I was creating my import profile for invoices. And then the acquisitions developers had to do some additional work on the invoice module side to be able to accept that data coming in and have it create the invoices in the invoices app. So that's an area where we needed to kind of synchronize our work across the different teams to make it all come out properly at the end. 
One of our backend stories, just to give you a flavor for stories. So this is the kind of story that I, as a product owner, I don't know the details of this and I'm not expected to know. This is the infrastructure though that the developers are creating to make sure that when we import the invoices, that they will actually do what they're supposed to. And so they fit into the overall structure that we need for data import and for invoices. And this one, I tend to work on the UI stories more, the user interface stories. Um, we needed to make it so that you could actually select that, I, that you wanted to import at a fact invoices. So there's various screens in data import that we needed to fix so that you had a choice for importing invoices and creating invoices in Folio. And this, this set of scenarios shows those, uh, those screens and then there are little mockups down below. When we are working on these, um, sometimes there can be a lot of conversation around them. This one is fairly simple, not a lot of uh, uh, fancy stuff we needed to do with this. You'll see uh, typically the developer who has worked on this or the last person who tested it will be in the assignee section. And here's an area where if something is important to you, you can come in and click on, um, I'm gonna stop watching it. You can click on start watching this issue. And every time that issue is updated or a new comment is added to it, you'll be able to see that and you'll get an email about it. So particularly, particularly if there are bugs that you report that you're interested in knowing about, um, it's great to uh, set yourself as a watcher on that particular JIRA. I'm not going to go into a lot of detail on tasks and bugs, but I did want to show you a couple of boards that the teams use and then dashboards that the project uses. So within Folijet, we have two boards that we typically use. We have a board that we call our feature board, and this represents the work that is being done in the current sprint, which is sprint 121. It ends today, so there shouldn't, actually it ends Monday, so there shouldn't be a lot of work waiting to be done. We still have several that are in progress that will be probably finished on Monday. Maybe a couple will spill over into Sprint 122. We have one that's being checked by developers right now. Then we do a last bit of testing and the product owner signs off and then it moves to the done column. So as you can see, we've finished 14 things in the sprint and we have eight that are still in progress in flight. But most of these are gonna finish. I think we're gonna have two that will spill over to the next sprint. In my team boards, we don't have um, swim lanes for the different uh, developers. We do show their pictures on the cards so we can kind of remember who's doing what. And we also have a backlog area where we have other work that's assigned to the team but is not in the current sprint. So this may be work that is ready to go. It may still be in draft. Um, it may not be done for a year from now, um, but we are, because we are getting up to the end of Kiwi, we're planning our work for the next few sprints. And this is the sprint that we'll start on Monday. We've already planned what we're gonna do in the next two sprints as well. So we have some tentative ideas of what we're planning to do there. Um, we also have a, another board for Folijet, which is our support board. And this is where, as more and more libraries are going live, we wanted to have a way to track the bugs and make sure that we can always pop the bugs up to the most, the highest priority, especially ones that are um, impeding work for a live library. So right now we have a handful of bugs that are being worked on, and we also have a backlog showing the, uh, the next highest things that should be worked on. So they'll always pull from the top of the backlog when one of the bug developers finishes their work and needs the next thing to do. The other board, just to show you a different flavor, um, Thunderjet is the acquisitions developers and they organize their work in what they call swim lanes. So each developer has a row across their board and you can see very quickly which developer is still working on stuff, uh, which people have finished all of their work, 
dentist, the product owner always ends up with a lot of things to check. Um, so it's, it's another way to track that work. And each team decides what's gonna be the best way for them. The last piece I wanna show you in JIRA is dashboards. Dashboards allow you to create um, different ways of looking at data in JIRA. And a lot of times we'll push these dashboards up to the wiki pages as well. So things like the bug tracking or the bug fest work that happens um, toward the end of a, of a release cycle. There's two boards in here I just wanted to show you quickly. Um, one of them is the Juniper release. And let me just quickly go find that one. and spell it correctly. And so the Juniper release is the one that we have just finished all the work on. There were 61 features that we worked on during the Juniper release. And these colors are the different product owners who were responsible for various different features. Down below, this is all of the uh, released issues and you can see they've all been closed now. So the all features have had all of their work completed. If for some reason we can't complete the work, we will sometimes create a follow on feature that will then get pushed out to the next release. But we want to, our goal is to have 100% closed and all of the major bugs fixed by the time we release a new version. And the last piece I want to show you here in the dashboards is a dashboard that I use to keep track of my work. Um, Foliage again is my development team. And as part of Kiwi, the current development work that we're, we're working on now, um, we have various features that we're working on. And this gives me a snapshot where I can see quickly um, what, where are we with the work for this particular feature, which is making some changes in the data import infrastructure to make it more stable and reliable. We have a total of 36 various kinds of things that we need to do. We have finished six. We have some that we're still working on outlining the details. We have one that's blocked by work that we may need from some other team or, or something that needs to be done before we can do it. And we have 21 that are still open. So this is our highest priority. We are trying to push all of these through as quickly and as uh, cleanly as possible. You'll see for each of the features that my development team has committed to, you'll see a different tab. And I'm using color codes to help me remember. The green is we have all the details sorted out. Now we just have to do the work. The red is we don't have the details sorted out yet. And the orange is we're in the middle of sorting out the details. So my goal is to get them all green as soon as I can, and then we're going to work our way down as much of this as we can by the end of the Kiwi development work. So if you like details, if you're a developer or somebody that wants to track particular issues um, to make sure that they're getting worked on or to be able to comment on particular issues, um, this is a part of the folio community that you may be interested in getting into. If you don't want to get into this level of detail, there is no reason that you have to get into JIRA. Um, but the wiki is definitely the most useful portion of folio. And so I hope that you will uh, take a look there and see some of the resources there that will help you as a new community member. All right, Paul, I think I've run out of things to say. Thank you, Amory. That was an incredibly helpful overview of Wiki and Jira. And we thank you for lending your expertise to this uh, presentation. This concludes our overview uh, offered today. We invite you to view the other videos in the Folio Community Onboarding Series by looking in the description of this video on YouTube or following the member onboarding button on the Folio Project home at folio.org. We look forward to seeing many of you in the Folio community. Have a good day.